Hello, welcome to this video on uh, Dhammapada, chapter 6, Pandita Vaggo, uh, verse 12, that's uh, verse 87 in the consecutive numbering. Kannam dhammam vipahaya sukkam bhaveta pandito uka anukama gamma viveke yat Duramam. And I'll recite it again with the text up. Here we are. Kanham dhammam vipahaya sukkam bhaveta pandito uka anukama gamma viveke yatta duramam. Vip Bahaya, abandoning, this is the absolutive, uh, normally has a past tense or sequential sense, A having happened, then B happens, A goes in the um, absolutive. Uh, sometimes it, can, it could be translated as leaving or having left, abandoning, having abandoned. It's often it's often not temporal as such, but as sometimes for things happening at the at the same time. So vipaya, abandoning. Um, that is. Call up the iPad. Here we are. From our root ha. Very well known root to leave, to abandon, also means to be deprived or defective, and that's where we get the the adjective hina from lesser, deprived, lesser. Not so the con the um, the contrast between, for example, maha and hina. In the sense of abandoning something you will find it most often used with the prefix pra. And of course, in Pali, pa, paha. Absolutive form, pahaya. It can take a further Verbal prefix, like so many Sanskrit verbs, can take you know, two prefixes. Some, some even take three. Anyway, with a V in front of it, so in Sanskrit would be vipraha, and in San in Pali, the P of course doubles vipraha becomes vipaha, vipahaya. This separative prefix V has the idea of you know, getting rid of something. Um, it sometimes has an intensive form with you know, the verb paha, praha, paha has the idea of getting rid of something anyway, but vipaha is like an intensive, completely doing away with it. It's gone vipahaya, totally abandoning, getting rid of something, getting something right out of you. And we had um, earlier in the Dhammapada, the, um, we had the pasannan chittam. You know, the, the, the calmed mind, the mind where the pasanna, all the muck has settled to the bottom. We also, you will recall, had this prefix vi in front of it. So it gave us vipasanna, vipasannena chetasa, with the chetas, with the mind that is vipasanna. The idea of the vi there being not only that the muck has settled, it's done its, its prasanna, Settle down, but viprasanna suggests not only settle down, but actually got rid of. Um, so intensive and the idea of totally getting getting rid of something, gone forever. So viprasanna chetasa vipahaya. So kanham dhammam vipahaya. Abandoning, forsaking, dark dhammas or black characteristics, anything nasty or negative about you. Um, and of course, the kanha here 
um, as indeed in early English, you know, light and dark and white and black, it's the, it's the idea of not, not so much of visual colour, but of the light and the absence of light. When you talk about, for example, a dark day, um, it's you know, th things. You know, th there's the negative aspect to dark, when you know, evil gets done while concealed. That's why things are called black and blackmail, for example. You're doing it under, under cover of darkness, so you can't be seen. And it's the same kind of idea here. Though equally, equally, the word Krishna in Sanskrit actually means the, 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 the black. In iconography, Krishna often appears as a dark blue. The, the very dark blue and the black often tend to be confused in, um, in Sanskrit. Or it's confused because mer merged into one. So... But here it's used in a negative connotation, where, of course, Krishna has no negative um, connotation with that name. So Krishna, um, by the way, this is how it's spelled in Sanskrit. I'm highlighting here. It's all retroflected. Krishna. And becomes by regular phonetic mutation, Kanha in Pali. So Kanha and Dhammam. Dhammam here in the sense of just everything, your nature, characteristics, phenomena, Mental states, you know, the, the, the word here embraces those things. So, abandoning all of these you know, dark or negative phenomena about yourself, sukhambhaveta pandito, the wise man, bhaveta, this is the optative form from bhaveti, Sanskrit bhavayati, to bring into being, to cause to be, and therefore to. to, to develop, work on something, increase it. The the sukkam, sukka. I bet again, the sukka. So what's going on here? There we are. Sukka is the opposite in this context of kanha, it means you know, bright, shining. It comes from a root, um, shuch, Sanskrit root shuch, um, of which the primitive meaning is to shine or to glow, and therefore to be you know, bright, pure. Um, and from that, we get the adjective shuchi, pure, uh, which could in Pali becomes suchi now by um, a, fin uh, a semantic extension that i didn't quite readily understand this root, sh root shuch in sanskrit um, basic meaning shine flame gleam glow burn also means to to, to suffer pain um, and we can understand from tap, you know, the root tap and tapas, tap originally means to 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 burn, be hot, cognate with our word tepid. And then we have then tapas then going through the going through the heat, going through the pain. You can kind of see that that extension. But this idea of purity becoming pain, yeah, if it's burning, yes, painful. Um maybe that's the, the, the way the meaning extended. So we have this um Shuchati to be bright or pure. Quite a wide range of meaning, meaning to decay or be putrid, but also to feel pain or sorrow. And in that meaning, sorry, give me a view of the iPad. In that meaning, we have shoka, which in Pali becomes soka. And the emperor, the emperor Ashoka, means without grief, he who is without grief, without pain. And that is the standard, you know, the k ch flip um, that, that we often see. We often see a ch or a j in the root of the verb with a corresponding g or k in the, in the nouns formed off that verb. Off that root, I should say, rather like um, bhujbhoga, 
and the well-known one Yuj Yoga. Well, it's the same here, Shuch Shoka. We occasionally, not very much now, but we occasionally do see this K and Ch flip in English, even in modern English, but the, the, the other way around, for example, with a verb that ends in a K sound and a corresponding noun ending in a Ch. We have it, for example, in um, speak, the verb to speak and the noun speech. And even though they're spelt differently, it shows that phenomenon, the kutcha ch change. And equally, um, the verb to break and a breach. Again, pronounced differently from break and breach. Um, but it's that same phenomenon, the the, the, the k ch change. So that's how we get um, Ashoka uh, from this um, primitive root shuch. Oops, where am I? Here we are. So from shuch, meaning to shine or to glow, many adjectives are made by adding a r are with a short a suffix to the root. So, shuch plus ra, which in Sanskrit becomes the, again, we get a ch to ker flip, shukra. And also, um, you're allowed a form, a less common form in sukla. In some in some words, shukla is one of them. The la becomes the more common form. So that's how we get the Sanskrit shukla becomes in Pali sukka. Um, so that's the that's the derivation of it. Shuch shukra shukla sukka. Um, and it seems, um, I was asked at a previous class, it seems n nothing to do with, with sugar um, or any, anything like that, which seems to have an, an, um, might have an Arabic origin. So, kanham dhammam vipahaya, abandoning or having abandoned all you know, negative phenomena, negative aspects. Sukkam bhaveta pandito, let the wise man um, develop the bright or the, the bright side, the positive side of himself. Oka and Okama Gamma Viveke Yatadurumam. So Oka um, in Sanskrit it's a noun in in the as consonantal de declension. So in the home would be okasi, and of the homes of the house would be okasam. By the house would be okasa, with this consonantal declension. As often happens in Pali, where we have a consonantal declension in Sanskrit, it flips over to an ordinary, much more common vowel declension in Pali. Thus we have, we have oka, okam as an ordinary neuter noun here, ending in short. Ah, and that is why we have oka, the ablative form, from the house. So, coming from his home, leaving home, anokum, agamma, agamma, agam, coming into, coming to, anokum, accusative of motion. So, from the home, meaning from having a home, agamma, coming an come into non home that is into into home, homelessness yatta where that's the relative you know, into this homeless state where such and such where viveke in seclusion duramam is um an absence of a difficult a, something that's difficult to enjoy or as a noun some somewhere where an absence of pleasure um, and as an adjective un, unenjoyable a place where enjoyment just is difficult to find literally difficult to 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 enjoy meaning of course you can't can't be enjoyed at all in the previous video i was explaining how the prefix du meaning bad or difficult 
undergoes various changes and in Sanskrit, and it's reflected here in Pali, um, you cannot ever have a double r sound. It's not permitted in Sanskrit or Pali. So if you have something that wants to be durramam, to avoid the double r, you drop the r of the dur and you give, give a, a compensatory lengthening to the vowel. So durramam, which does not exist, becomes duramam. Lack of enjoyment as a noun, difficult to enjoy as an adjective. Viveka, um, the original meaning of it is um, the discrimination, disting, you know, distinguishing between one thing and, and another. But, uh, sorry, is that the original meaning? I don't know whether it is. But it certainly also means not only a mental discrimination of uh, the idea of separating one thing from another, discriminating between the good and the bad, the true and the untrue, the ability to, to discern one thing from another, the idea of separating them. And the also, an equally common me, I think equally common, uh, viveka, meaning seclusion. So in other words, you are separating yourself, putting yourself apart um, from you know, no normal contact with people. So in seclusion, viveka yatta duramam. So oka anoka magamma, from the home, coming into non-home, coming into homelessness, yatta, where, viveke, in seclusion, not living with other people, duramam, it is difficult to enjoy, or you know, effectively hard, or even impossible to find in, in enjoyment. So I will read this through for you once more. Kanhan dhammam vipahaya suktam bhaveta pandito Oka anokama gamma viveke yatta duramam Actually, I've just spotted a mistake here. This is a final M, so it should be written as a full consonantal M there, and equally this should be written as a full consonantal M. I'll just pause for a moment and correct it on the screen. There we are. Um, I've corrected it on the screen. Oh, and made the text boxes disappear at the same time. <clears throat> right, there we are. Um, and uh, that concludes the video on this verse.